Hi everyone, I'm here today to do a chatty Friday Reads. I apologize for having been absent for a little while, but you know, I moved and I started a new job and there was an attempted coup on our government, so I've just been a little busy and emotionally drained <laughs> from all of that and haven't had the time to film because up until, you know, a few days ago this apartment was a disaster. Uh, I still haven't gotten everything fixed, like there's no rhyme or reason to the organization on this bookshelf other than like my short story collections are there and my nonfiction is here but it's not alphabetized at all so it could be better. But I thought I would just do a little chatty update about like where I've been, more specifics about what I've been doing and and big life changes happening. Uh, it all kind of happened at once really fast all of a sudden. I had my job interview for this current job on December 15th and I think I found out about getting the job like couple days before Christmas so immediately had to like start finding apartments and that's really challenging because I moved to a small mountain community that's where the library I'm working at is and it's peak season right now I live pretty close to some of like the most famous ski resorts in the world so it's peak season right now meaning they need a lot of of temporary seasonal workers to work the ski lifts and the resorts and stuff so it's really challenging to find housing in December in a ski town Oops, didn't know that, but I had to do it anyway. So we found a little place. I think it's pretty nice, you know. We're learning its quirks. That's kind of a thing that you do whenever you move to a new place. Like, you learn the kind of things that start to bother you a little bit. Um, but overall, it's very nice and we have minimal complaints. So yeah, I'm living in a mountain town. It's very small. Um, we don't have access to a Target. Uh, we don't get mail at our building. So there are some adjustments to be made for sure. It just is different. But I started my job on Monday. I've worked for two days and I'm going to be working part-time from here on out just because libraries are undervalued. So even though I might live in like a pretty well-funded library system because of the lack of value that people put on library workers themselves, it's difficult to find full-time librarian positions. So like, you know, if you've lived in the United States, it'd be really nice if you voted to support your local library system or your municipality that funds the library in whatever ways you can because I think a lot of funding decisions are decided based on tax dollars and um, whether or not the populace values the library. So if you value the library, I hope you also value your library workers because now I am in that family and I'm not getting paid very much but I think it, you know it'll work for now. I love having some feelings of stability and I really am happy at my job. I work in a beautiful library. I'm in the mountains which are you know pretty much always snow crested and absolutely beautiful and there are pine trees everywhere. It just is gorgeous and like even my drive to work is beautiful. <laughs> I don't think I'll get tired of it anytime soon. And I, my coworkers so far seem very kind. I will be getting to do a lot of the things that a librarian would do even though I don't actually get the official title. But I'll be doing things like involving acquisitions, working the service desk of core, or I'll be um, pulling books, helping quarantine books. Like I, I am working in the physical building and I am interfacing with patrons on a day-to-day -day basis, which could be kind of scary in a town where people visit from all over the world pretty regularly, especially this time of year. But I feel extremely safe. Um, there, there are a lot of provisions in place to keep library staff safe, including quarantining of books for three days after they enter the building from somewhere else and they're fully disinfected and everything and everyone has to wear masks. There's plexiglass everywhere, so I feel extremely safe and no one on the library staff has has contracted COVID since it started. So I think that they have good processes down. But it is very different like leaving the house and doing things. I talked to more people on my first day at work than I had talked to in the previous nine months in person. Like I, you know, talked to people on Zoom fairly regularly, but I think I talked to maybe like eight people in person in the past nine months. So to go from that to like talking to people pretty constantly and having to be on all day and having to wear a mask all day was strange, but good. I'm like really happy, which I'm not that I wasn't happy before, but everything is so new and exciting. I'm really happy. So I, I feel now motivated by my job to read a lot because part of my job will be having familiarity with our collection and what patrons are interested in. So I could be reading a little bit outside of my comfort zone in the future and that's totally fine. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for uh, listening to my whole preamble about life changes and stuff. But yes, this will be my filming setup for the time being, I guess. You know, the foreseeable future. I don't know if I love it. Like, our apartment's really small, so um, this is the only bookshelf in the apartment, and I wanted to be in front of it, but also means 
that our alcohol collection is in the shot. Actually, I'm to the books now. I haven't filmed in a while, and like for some reason I'm feeling nervous about it. I usually don't feel that, even if it's been a long time, but I feel like it's been so long since I filmed, I've kind of forgotten how to talk. Um, but I'm gonna try anyway. So I'm reading a lot of really exciting things right now. I'm hoping to get through rather a lot before the month is over, just because I had so many reading plans. For instance, I said at the beginning of the month in my TBR video that I wanted to do participate in the Invisible Cities project which is a reading initiative here on booktube and other places as well where they're encouraging people to read more translated fiction and experience the cultures of other cities while we're all still in lockdown. So they pick three countries a month and they encourage you to uh, watch films, eat the food, listen to the music of, and of course read the books from these specific countries. So the countries for this month were Japan, Argentina, and Morocco, and I've only read the Japan book, so I really want to get through my Argentina and my Morocco book, which are respectively Earth Eater and Sex and Lies. Earth Eater is a Argentinian magical realism novel about a woman who keeps eating dirt and I think that it gives her prophetic visions or something. It's been a while since I read the description and I will be talking about this book more in more depth you know once I've read it. I know I originally said that I wanted to read Adele by Leila Slimani but I discovered Sex and Lies. It's a weird thing to say but I discovered that book and it is a nonfiction work about um, the sex and intimate lives of women in Morocco and I really wanted to read that because I have been trying to integrate more reading, more nonfiction into my reading habits and Adele really didn't appeal to me that much honestly but I figured if I could introduce myself to her work through her nonfiction I might be more inclined to read her fiction later. So it's also short which is another bonus. So I have those two that I'm planning on reading. I also changed up a goal already. Um, that's you know why I'm gonna reassess these quarterly but I decided that I wanted rather than to like do a big reading batch of story graph recommendations and then reviewing how successful they were I figured it'd be more accurate a test of the algorithm to be reading one story graph recommendation every month because theoretically if it's an evolving algorithm it should improve my recommendations on a month-to-month -month basis as I read more and I feed it more data theoretically and I have quite a few books that it has recommended me that are on my shelf currently so it'll also help me cull my unread shelf by the way these are all unreads with a few exceptions of books that I've read that my partner wants to read so this is kind of what I'm working with in terms of like my to read shelf. Um, but anyway, the book that I want to read as my story graph recommendation pick for January is Upright Woman Wanted by Sarah Gailey. This has been on my top recommendations from story graph since I started the platform. So I asked for it for Christmas and I received it very kindly. I have read another Sarah Gailey novel which was Magic for Liars and I thought it was fine but I have been really intrigued to read more of their work. I know that this is like an alternative western about like some rebel women that call themselves librarians who are trying to um, smuggle literature and I think they're also gay. I am really looking forward to this. Again it's really short so I am hoping that I will get through this in the month as well. I have really ambitious plans for having just started a job and I will be working next week. So another one of my goals was to read a short story a day. I've done it so far so I'm pretty proud of myself and I finished my short, first short story collection so I wanted to move on to my next one and I decided that would be The Secret Lives of Church Ladies which I've heard fantastic things about and even more so um, as everyone's favorite books of the year lists have been coming out. I've just heard that nothing but phenomenal things about this and this was maybe my favorite cover of 2020. I kept thinking about it and wanting to get it and it kind of just auto-populated in a search bar. I was looking for a different book entirely, but this was the first response that came back and I was like, oh yeah, I really want to read that book. So I also added it to my cart when I was supposed to be buying a calendar. But uh, I've read the first two stories in it so far and they have been really, really great. They've both been pretty short. The next one is a little bit longer, so I'm excited to see um, what the stories are like, but they've been fabulous. And then I also have quite a sizable commute because I cannot afford to live in the town where my library is because it's like a resort town. So that means I'll be driving or taking the bus pretty regularly and I have a couple books uh, queued up that I would like to listen to. The first is A Thousand Shifts by Natalie Haynes which is finally being published in the United States I think in February. Uh, this book came out I think three years ago in the UK. It was nominated for the Booker back then. Kind of during the peak of all of those Greek myth retellings and 
it just didn't get picked up here in the US so it's sort of a little bit I think missed that wave. Anyway I know so many people loved it of the UK booktubers I follow so I was really pleased to see it on the list of ALCs from Libra, Libra FM, um, advanced listener copies that I can try out. And then I also want to listen to The Beguiling, which I heard mentioned on Alex from Big Al Books' channel as a notable read from last year, and then it showed up on the ALC list. And this is a book about a woman who's a lapsed Catholic and people start confessing horrible things they've done to her. I think she derives some sort of pleasure from being this human embodiment of a wailing wall. So uh, I don't know much more beyond the premise, but it sounds really intriguing. So I'm excited to listen to that one as well. So yeah, um, those are my basic reading plans, you know, nothing too big. Just like, I want to finish five books before the end of the month somehow. I'm trying to remain confident that I can do it. We shall see if that's true. But anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of these books, if you have anything to say to me. Um, I'd also love to answer questions about like what my my new job has been like and what some of my duties and responsibilities are. I'd love to talk more about my professional side of things because it is also bookish. And yeah, it's good to be back. It's good to be settled, to feel like I have a good filming setup. Um, a cute little apartment. This setup might change if I'm not happy with it, but there aren't that many other places for me to go, honestly, so this might be, this might have to suffice for now. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear your feedback and any questions you have for me and your thoughts on the books that I mentioned, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.